as an aside from the artists, I do want to bring up Pope Julius II, who would take power after Alexander VI. Now, we haven't talked about a lot of popes here, but Julius II will become particularly important. He is known as the warrior pope. What he's trying to do is use terrestrial power to enhance ethereal stances and earth, his earthly voice of God. In other words, he's trying to create uh, what are sometimes referred to as the church states or the Vatican states or the papal states. He's trying to create a territorial claim centered on the church. Really, he's kind of trying to recreate Rome. And he's trying to bring it glory. And he feels that who better than the Pope himself to take over lands and find resources and everything else. But where he becomes important to us is not so much his role as warrior Pope, but rather that he's an incredible patron of the arts. He will, for example, uh, commission the Sistine Chapel. He will commission the building of the new St. Peter's. He will commission the papal apartments. He will work with Michelangelo. He will work with Raphael. He will surround himself with artists and humanists, and that really draws the arts to Rome. So you'll notice that we start centering more and more on Rome in less and less on Florence. He even commissions the Julian tomb, which of course haunts Michelangelo throughout most of his career. 